attitude, aptitude, and action, I mean, how many people in this room are getting straight A's in life? And the three A's I talk about, it's the combination of these three. It's the combination of your attitude, it's the combination of aptitude, and it's the combination of action. It's all three. I mean, people are going to look to you from an aptitude standpoint and just say, you know, where's this person being? What are their book smarts? What are their street smarts? What do they bring to the table? What's their experience? From an action standpoint, it doesn't matter how much you know. It doesn't matter how many people you know. You got to do something with it. You got to take some action. And then the big A, attitude. Attitude, it's the first thing that comes into any room. It's your attitude that makes the difference. You make a difference. That's the impact. You know, every day we have about 25,000 to 50,000 thoughts. This is a fairly famous figure right here, obviously the thinker, but we all have lots of thoughts. We think about it. So what are you thinking about? What are you filling your mind with? What are you building into your computer? You know, you're, you're, you, what, what you're thinking about on a day-to-day -day basis. And I think Henry Ford got this right. What Henry Ford said, whether you think you can or you can't, you're right. You choose. You make the difference. You make an impact. Now, the Batman in this picture right here, that's me. This is, this, this is a few years ago, and I used to love renting this Batman costume. By the way, that's my daughter a whole bunch of years ago, and she's now at Queens, so she's a little older. This, this goes back a little bit. But I used to love to rent this Batman costume. And a few years later, by the way, it was Halloween that day, okay? It, it really was. I don't, I don't get dressed up as Batman every single day, although I would like to. It's, pretty, it's a pretty cool place to be. So I decided a few years later that I'd rent this Batman costume, and I'd get dressed up on Halloween, and I'd drive my kids to school as the Batman. So on that particular day, my daughter was a fairy princess. My son was a ninja turtle. So we all got dressed up. We got into the car at the time I had a black BMW, so I had a Batmobile, I had it all going on. So the Batman, the Batmobile, so we get in the car, we go up to the school. We get to the school and I figured I'd just drop my kids off, just take a few minutes and then boom, I'm off to work. So I get to the school and that just wasn't the case. Because you know what, a, super, a superhero is better than having the firemen and the police there, it's a superhero. So the principal saw me and a few of the teachers and they said, come on in we got to take you from classroom to classroom. Two hours later, I finally got out of the school. So I got out of the school, was a big hit in the school, had a lot of fun, jumped into the Batmobile, and I had to make up some time. And at the time, I was working north of Toronto, and it was a bit of a drive. So I had to get on a couple major highways, and I had to kind of pick up some time. So I got on the highway, and I was speeding excessively. Why well, I got pulled over by the police. So here I am sitting in the Batmobile. The officer is parked behind me. He gets out of his car. I'm sitting in my car. And you know how the wheels go, right? Bad wheels, good wheels. OK, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Checking rear view mirror, side view mirror, rear view mirror, side view mirror. I'm watching the officer coming up to my car trying to figure out, how am I getting out of this one? And these days, by the way, they would have told me, based on the rules these days, I was speeding pretty excessively. So the officer gets up to the car, I pop down the window, he looks in the window, and he goes, Batman, where are you going? I looked at him and I said, Gotham City. Now actually, I thought that was pretty funny. He didn't. So he said, look, Batman, I'm going to have to give you a pretty big ticket here. And I said, well, officer, can I just explain my situation? Can I tell you a little bit of the story, why I'm dressed like this? He said, sure, I've he heard some pretty good stories in my time, go for it. So we started to talk. And all of a sudden, we got into, you know, I was with my kids. I had just dropped them off. He looks at me and he goes, I've got two young kids. The, good, the wheels are going, this is good, this is good, this is good. He's got kids. Common ground, common ground. Common ground, the barriers go down every single time. So he says, you know what, that's a pretty good story. I'm going to let you go. But before you go, Batman, you have to take off the mask. I looked at him and I said, sorry, I can't reveal my true identity. <laughs> now, again, I actually thought that was pretty funny again. 
he didn't. So he let me go, then I went up to my work, I got to my office, and you know what, I wanted to make a bit of a grand entrance. You know, it's not every day you have the Batman costume on. So, pretty big company I was working for at that point in time, about 500 employees, security at the front, so I decided to make the entrance, walk in, security is supposed to stop you, but here's how you get past security, get dressed up as the Batman or Batwoman, you can walk right in. I walked right in, and rather than going to my office, I walked around for a little while, and I messed with people. Because I was in a costume, they weren't, they didn't know who I was, I knew who they were, so I had some fun. That evening, I went out trick-or-treating with my kids as the Batman. Big hit in the neighborhood, lots of fun. The end of the evening, didn't get this picture, which I had of, full moon, got up on the roof of the house and did one of these. Because you have to do one of those. So, why do I tell this story? I tell it for a number of reasons. First of all, don't take yourself too seriously. Don't take yourself too seriously. Take what you do seriously, but don't take yourself too seriously. You've got to have some fun in life. You've got to sort of kick back a little bit. Here's a great book, and by probably one of the greatest philosophers that ever lived, Dr. Seuss. And a few years ago, a client came into my office and said, Tim, I know you love Dr. Seuss. I have a great book for you. And he put it in front of me and he said, have you read this? And I said, yeah, a while ago with my kids. And he says, it's pretty good. And I had a few minutes and I said, wow, it looks like a quick read. Let's sit down and read it together. I started to read it and it blew me away. Now this is a little scary. I've memorized the book. I'm not going to do the whole book for you today, but let, let me give you just a little bit of taste. It starts off like this. It says, congratulations, today is your day. You're off to great places, you're off and away. You have brains in your head, you have feet in your shoes. You can steer yourself any direction you choose. Seuss gets it, he gets it. It's all about choice. Life is about choice. You've got to choose, you've got to make that decision. And then the book goes on, it talks about fear, rejection, failure. Indispensable prerequisites for success. Hey, bring them on if you learn from them. Because when you learn from them, it's just called experience. It's a wonderful thing. At the end of the book, he says, yes, you will succeed. Yes, you will indeed. 98 and 3 quarter percent guaranteed. Pretty cool. It's not 100%, but it's pretty close. Kind of fun. Hey, I love to give this book away all the time. It's a great book. You know, qualify people, though. Do you like to read? No, then don't send them a book. But if they like to read, if they like to read, figure it out. If they have young children, isn't this pretty good? Send it. Anytime you give a book to, write a little message in it. You know what? Life is a choice. Choose wisely. Something like that. Put a message in it so they'll remember. So you'll make an impact. Now, I'm really big on this thing called G7. G8 was already taken, and I think a lot of us are... <laughs> are pretty sick of G20, so you know I went with G7. G7 is just this, give, 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 and give again. It's the attitude of giving. It's the attitude of what can I do for you? How can I make a difference? I can tell you right now, this philosophy, if you exercise this throughout your life, there is, there's nowhere you can't go. The possibilities are endless. It's all about giving. It always has been and it always will be. But it's the attitude of giving. How can you make a difference? There's lots of great gifts. I think most of the time, the gifts are things like charity and money. Let me tell you some of my favorite gifts. And you know what? This is pretty easy. Look in the mirror. Your anatomy will tell you how to do this. You're born with two ears and one mouth. Use them proportionately. As a matter of fact, double up on the ear quotient and listen four times as often as you speak. People think so often because they're talking, they control the situation. That's, that's just not true. Au contraire. The person who asks good questions and listens controls every situation. Key here, good questions. Figure out what are the good questions. Get others to talk. More importantly, get them to talk about them. What's important to them? They are. What's important to you? You are. So G7, it's the attitude. It's the attitude of what can I do for you? Some other great gives are collaboration, sharing, authenticity, smile, please, thank you. Those are the great gives. That's what will make a difference. Think about that as you're going through. It will make a huge difference. What's important to them? How do you make a difference for them? And then it comes back. It always comes back. Some of us know this fellow right here. 
He had one of my favorite great philosopher too, right up there with Dr. Seuss. Do or do not. Remember that one? Do or do not. And he talked about trying, right? Do or do not. It's not about trying. You either do it or you don't. Try. What does try mean? Intention. I intend to take care of that for you. Well, are you going to do it or are you not going to do it? I intend to buy that loaf of bread at the store. Well, no, you're going to buy it or you're not. So catch yourself sometimes. And I'm not saying you're going to change this. You're going to still say try. I do. You're still just going to say I intend. But either you do it or you don't. Either you take action or you don't. Yoda got that one. Your plan, you've got to have a plan. You've got to figure out what's your plan, what's your goals, where are you going, what's your direction, how are you going to make a difference. Are you where you want to be? I'm exactly where I want to be. I can tell all of you right now, you're where you want to be. It's up to you. If you want to change it, change it. Get out there and do it. And how do you feel about you? How do you feel about you? Because you know what? If you feel good about you, I feel good about you. It's up to you. And here's the thing too, is if you can't get juiced about you, if you can't get excited about you, why should I? Why should I? I'm not saying jump up and down and go crazy and stuff like that. It's your comfort zone. But you've got to get pretty excited about you. Your story, your life, where you've been, what you're going to do. That's it. That's the passion. People love passion. What do you love? What makes a difference for you? Because if you love it and you're passionate about it, it's genuine. And guess what genuine is? Contagious. It's contagious. I want it. Look at that person. Everybody wants it. Find what you love to do. Find your passion. Everything else will fit right in. It will connect right in. That's how it works. That's how it's always worked. You see, I'm a pretty simple person. I need something really easy, like my name is an acronym for my purpose. Then I can remember it. It makes a lot more sense. So I just use my name, Tim. When people say, what do you do? What's your passion? By the way, your purpose in life is just your big why. Why do you do what you do? That's your purpose. Don't make it complicated. Make it easy for you. Because if you can't articulate it and you're not comfortable with it, do you think I'm going to be? No, I'm not. So I kept it this way, Tim. I just touch, inspire, and move people to take action on their passion and their goals. That's what I do. That's what I do every day. And I can get pretty juiced about that, pretty excited about that. I love to do it. Boy, this isn't work. This is fun. This is pleasure. This is great. I love this kind of stuff. It's just a good thing to be doing. Eagles. What are eagles? Eagles are the people of wisdom, passion, the people that soar, the people who have been there before. If you want to be an eagle, you got to hang with the eagles. You got to find the eagles. You got to fly with the eagles. And by the way, there's lots of eagles out there. Lots of eagles out there. So ask them. Anything you want to do, be, wherever you want to go, either people have done it or they're already doing it, find them. Ask them. You know what the true eagles will do? They'll help you. And if they don't, they're not eagles. Eagles get give. Eagles get give. Hey, it's a compliment to people when somebody comes up to me and says, hey, Tim, I'd like 20 minutes of your time or whatever. That's a compliment to me. It's a compliment. You learn both ways. You always do. You always will. It's a two-way street. Here's some pretty amazing people. Oprah Gandhi, Terry Fox, Rick Hansen, two Canadian heroes. I mean, Oprah, not, not, not a lot of guys will say this, but I love Oprah. I love Oprah. She's a giver. She's a giver. She's amazing. She makes a difference. She may be the most powerful person on this planet. Good for her. Look what she's done against insurmountable odds. Oprah's had, you know, not the easiest life, but look what she's done. Look at the difference she makes for so many people. Gandhi, that's obvious. Terry Fox, Rick Hansen. Rick Hansen in his wheelchair. Hey, I'm going to go around the world in my wheelchair. What? Come on. What are you thinking here? Well, he did. He went under the Eiffel Tower. He met the Pope in Rome. He went across the Great Wall in China, or part of it. That's incredible. Think of the insurmountable odds that they were up against. What do children always ask? What's the question children always ask? Children always ask, why? Why? It's a good question. 
You know what? Why give? Why make a difference? Why share? Why collaborate? Why help people? Why? Second question to think or ponder about is, why not? Why not? Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you make a difference? Why wouldn't you collaborate? Smile, please, thank you. Share authenticity. Why not? Third question to ponder or think about is, why not you? Why not you? Think about the amazing things people have done against insurmountable odds. Incredible things. Why not you? You know, why not you in Paris sitting in a cafe enjoying your favorite cup of coffee? Why not you in Scotland sitting at breakfast watching the mist come up over the mountains? Why not you in Rome at the Vatican in the Sistine Chapel looking up at Michelangelo's work, one of the greatest creations ever? Why not you walking along a beach in uh, Australia looking out at the Great Barrier Reef? Why not you in a sailboat in the Caribbean for two weeks with no cares in the world? Why not you standing at the edge of the Grand Canyon, sipping up an Arizona sunset? Why not you? Last question to ponder, last question to think about. Big A, attitude, taking action too. Why not now? Why not now? What's holding you back? You know, some great things to think about. Gandhi said the best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. Marian Moore said, the heart that gives gathers. One of my favorites of all time, and I think this is pretty powerful, is life is an echo. Life's an echo. What you send out comes back. Let me build on that a little bit. If you send it out in abundance, it comes back in abundance. Send it out, send it out, send it out, send it out. It all comes back, and it keeps coming back. Pretty powerful. Will make a difference. It's about giving. It's about G7. It's about making difference for other people. That's where it all comes from, and it comes from you. You can make a difference every day. Remember, we have those moments. We have a lot of them. 25,000 to 50,000 moments every day. Make them count. Make a difference. Thank you for your time.